What's up, Hustlers? It's your boy JT Automation's back with another video. I'm here with my brother Sawan, and this is me taking action. Be sure to follow him on all his social media. I'll make sure it's linked down in the description below. What we're going to talk about in this video is what does it take to qualify for a traditional mortgage, and then we're going to give you guys an alternative to let you know that you can acquire all the real estate that you want, Amen. make as much money as you want from real estate Amen. without having to qualify with a traditional mortgage right after the intro. All right, brother, so thank you for coming back again. Yes, sir. All right, what, what I want to get straight into in this video is for one, like I've never had a mortgage in my life, right? Full disclosure, mm -hmm. um, I'm not a huge real estate investor. I own four properties right now, right? So nothing crazy, like Sawan here owns 60 and county, right? So depending on when you watch this video, yeah, it might, it might be six, house. yeah, <laughs> it might be 600, right? So we did a lot of videos in a lot of different properties. So I'm learning my real estate game from Sawan, I tell you guys all the time that if I'm not a subject matter expert in something, I'm going to put you in communication with somebody so you can add to your network because that's how you really win. So can you explain to me and for the viewers that may want to acquire real estate but never uh, had a traditional mortgage and they might not be able to have a business that can give them enough money to buy real estate yeah. cash. So how do you get a traditional mortgage? Okay. Um I just love that question. So the first way I got my first loan for my house, okay, uh, was through a traditional bank. Yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. I worked at the car dealership selling cars. You know, nothing crazy. I was making, I was making decent money. I was making seventy thousand dollars a year at the time. And what the lady explained to me was I had to be working the same job for two years. Okay, so I had, I had to show um, income from that job on like a W-2 pay stub. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she said not bank accounts, she said not bank statements, you know, not like a cash apps or not money that you get under the table, but like a, a stub where it has a year to day on it, year to date on it. I had to be working there for at least two years. Okay. So that was the first criteria. Uh, Cause I was like straight out of college. I was like straight out of college at that point. I had just dropped out of college, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was the first, that was the first hurdle. Yeah. The second hurdle was the credit score. Okay, so when I graduated from college, I had just, I didn't graduate, sorry. I did not graduate, I dropped out of college. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I first left out of college, I had this Amex card. Um, I had this Amex card and I got it from, um, I, applied, I had really good credit at the time in college because my mom set me up with an authorized user my junior year in high school. So I had a 720 coming into college. Got this credit card from uh, J.C. Penney. Was it J.C. Penney? It was Dillard's, from Dillard's. And next thing you know, it turns out it's an Amex card, mm -hmm. not really a J.C. Penney card. So mm -hmm. I could use it anywhere and had a $10,000 limit. Got pregnant, got depressed, ended up blowing the $10,000 on the credit card mm -hmm. and messed up my credit because it went into collections. So now I got a, I think at that point I had like a 580 credit score. So that was my next challenge that I had to, that I had to, had to cross. Um, and that, I mean, that took a year to clean up my credit, you know. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was making money from the dealership, okay? Mm -hmm. After I crossed that hurdle, um, I had to actually file taxes, okay? So that's one thing they just don't teach you in school about taxes and stuff. And so I wasn't filing my taxes every year. Mm -hmm. So uh, finally got good, got good on my taxes, okay? Got good on, turns out that they paid me money to file my taxes, so that worked mm -hmm. out. So finally, I got good on my taxes, and um, you know that took a few more months, and after I had filed my taxes, then they wanted me to have reserves. Like, it just, it was something like something else. It was never like, it was like a never-ending process. Yeah. So mind you. Um, were, were you trying to get like a half a million dollar house no, or like no, no, a million no, no, no. dollar house? I was trying to get a hundred thousand dollar house. Okay. So my rent at the time, I was at Steeplechase in Adams Farm. My rent at the time was $1,100 a month. Mm -hmm. And the bank was telling me on a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, my mortgage would be like $650, $700. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, clearly I can afford it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I've been paying $1,100 a month for two years, clearly I can afford a $700 mortgage, you know? Mm -hmm. But she said, well, even though we know you can afford it, you still have to look this certain way on paper. Mm -hmm. And if you don't look this way, then underwriting. So you can get a house under contract, 
You can get a pre you can get a pre qual letter from the bank. You go shopping. You put in your non refundable earnest with the buyer. You know, it can go to underwriting. That's what the mortgage calls, whatever their background stuff is. And then they could still deny your loan in underwriting. I'm like, that's crazy. So she wanted me to make sure I had everything crispy clean before we got to that process. So, um, so that was the last thing was the reserves. And so I ended up solving the reserves by, um, by you know, selling some more cars and using my 401k um, as reserves. So luckily, you know, I was able to get through that process. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, it took me a couple of years to get through that process. It made me realize that not everybody is going to be able to get through that process. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I got the first house on a traditional loan, got the second house on a traditional loan. How, how far yeah. apart did you buy your first two houses? First two houses was 12 months apart. Oh, that's so, dope. You right. was moving. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> after I bought the first house, I was um, after I bought the first house, I wanted to move my, my girlfriend in at the time, but mm -hmm. she didn't want to move in. So she was like, hey, we're not married, so I can't move in. So I ended up renting out that house. We ended up getting engaged. So it was like, well, now we got to have a house, you know, yeah. and um, it turns out the mortgage, uh, the mortgage person, that state employee said, hey, you got to wait a whole 12 months. So another waiting game, mm -hmm. you know, and that was just two months after we bought, bought the first house. And so we bought the first two houses. So I got the third house under contract. Right. Went to the bank and they said, hey, no, debt to income. So that's like a whole nother issue is debt to income. Oh, they were saying you had so much debt with the other two mortgages. Exactly. Yeah. So I couldn't buy. And I'm like, how do we how do we do this? And then that's when I learned creative financing. Right. Mm -hmm. We can take over people's existing mortgage. There's no cap on how many that you can have. You don't need any credit score. You don't need W-2. You don't need reserves. You simply just need to know the steps of finding people who need your help and who are willing to pass you a mortgage and let them know that you're willing to take over their mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. <laughs> that's well, it. If I'm somebody that's watching this video and I'm in need of help, and then also you guys that are watching this can take advantage of this play for finding people as well. So let's say that because of whatever happened in life, I fell behind on my payments. Now I'm in pre-foreclosure, about to get foreclosed on. I'm okay with getting rid of this house because I want to try to save my credit. I'll go live in an apartment for a little while, get myself back together, and then I want to be able to get another house, yeah. right? So if I'm interested in having somebody help me, because by this point, I realize I can't afford to stay in this house, but I don't want to have a hundred thousand dollars on my credit that just seems like i'll never be able to buy another house in my life right how can i give you that house go ahead go ahead well the first things first is mm -hmm. they do want the hundred thousand dollars of 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 line of credit on their credit okay let me explain why what, what you mean by that yeah so you're saying if the person if the seller who i found is yeah. behind on payments now they have bad credit because they're behind on payments yeah like let's say that's me right. i'm hundred thousand behind right Lost my job right. or whatever. And yeah. they just want some time to, you know, they just want some time to get back on their feet so they can yeah. buy another house. The, that person, most people will think, you know, well, they need to get that loan out of their name. No, 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 no. They need to keep that loan in their name. Because if they got bad credit on a mortgage, the only way to fix that is good payments over time. Okay. And so we so we know that through just good credit practices that car payments student loan payments and house payments, which are the most you know, expensive things that you're gonna buy in the world, mm -hmm. weigh the most on your credit because those are the most expensive things that if you have a home mortgage, you probably should keep it in your name so your credit can get better over time. So it's better to try to see if I can find somebody that, if I'm bad yes. $5,000 in the hole, yes. find somebody that's willing to pay the $5,000 to, to catch me up and like make my monthly payments for the next for sure. whatever I got left on my 30 years. For sure, because things that are on your credit that, um, you know, accounts that have been on your credit for 10 years, way more than accounts that have been on your credit for two months. Okay. Right. So if you've had your property, you know, mortgage for 10 years, why would you get rid of that account on your credit if your goal is to increase your credit over time so you can qualify for another one? Yeah. That's what I would tell the seller. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Let's focus on how much you need in order to get you out of this situation so you can start starting over. 
Okay. And I'm going to keep up the payments here so you can increase your credit so you can go get the car that you want and get pre-qualified for the next house that you want. All right. So you now, what I'm now let's flip it to the other side. Right. So yeah. like, let's say I'm that person, you know, just for I know a lot of you all like actually understand better with examples. So if I'm five thousand dollars behind yeah. on my hundred thousand dollar mortgage just for easy math. But I want you to catch me up. I also want. Ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars because I want to go get a nice apartment and figure out life, right? So now that's a good deal. You can get a hundred thousand dollar house for essentially fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. But what if you don't have fifteen thousand okay. dollars? Do you just walk away from that opportunity? No, no, not at all, not all at right. all. So I have a I have a group home over on Wendover. Lady wanted forty thousand dollars outside of her mortgage. I didn't have $40,000 to give her. Mm -hmm. What I said is I said, honey, do you have anybody to, uh, to buy your house where you get $40,000 outside of your loan? She said, no. I said, well, how long are you willing to wait? She said, I can't wait long because they're gonna foreclose on the house on this day. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. If I give you $40,000 outside of your loan, would you accept it? Yes, perfect. Take your $40,000 in $200 a month payments until it's paid off. She said, great. Mm -hmm. Problem mm -hmm. solved. Problem yeah. solved. So it's not a lack of it's not a lack of money. It's a lack of creativity, a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowing how to structure deals the proper way. Because I can get her out yeah. of the house, and as long as I can rent the house for yeah. at least two hundred dollars more than the mortgage, I give you real numbers. Okay, yeah. I give right. you real numbers. So the mortgage that I, so she was eight thousand dollars behind. Okay. Okay. She was eight thousand dollars behind. The mortgage I took over was eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. The house is worth about one hundred and eighty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. So you got good equity. In right. It. Got good equity in it. She wanted forty thousand though. Okay. She wanted forty thousand dollars. And so what I could rent the house for was thirteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the mortgage is six ninety. I give her two hundred dollars. I rent the house for thirteen hundred dollars. Okay. Thirteen hundred minus two hundred is eleven hundred minus let's call it six ninety seven hundred. So whatever whatever that is left, four hundred roughly. I get paid about four hundred bucks net on that deal. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So great. You want forty thousand dollars? Who's getting? Has has anybody been willing to give you that? Yeah. No. Okay. What if I'm willing to give you that? Let's take it a step back because yep. because mm -hmm. you also said she was behind eight grand. Yep. So how do we get the eight grand to catch up the note? Okay. So in this particular case, um, in this particular case, I got a private money person. Okay. Who okay. wanted? He just wanted to. Um, in this particular case, I had a private money person who wanted to invest. Okay. Mm -hmm. He had just. Uh, he had a. He had a, a trucking company, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, the con the contract that he had with UPS. They were paying him a severance pay uh, for all of his trucks, so they were taking his trucks from him and taking his routes. Mm -hmm. So they were giving him, uh, they were pretty much just buying him out. Here's his lump sum of money. Yeah. Okay. Now he knew he was gonna blow, he knew he was gonna blow the money, so he said he figured he'd invest it. Mm -hmm. So he actually lent me the money on a on a third position note because the more because the uh, the seller got a second position note of her forty. Okay, and then he got a third position note. Okay, and so he gets paid an interest only payment every single month. Now, now I know a lot of people was thinking, hey, I don't know people with money, but literally this guy I went to high school with. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to high school with him. He just kept up with me over time and he reached out and said, hey man, this is what I got going on. Okay, now um, turns out I didn't even need to do that because when I called the mortgage, when I called the mortgage to catch up her payments, I represented myself as an assistance program who was helping the seller, just like I pitched the seller, mm -hmm. as an assistance program who's helping the seller catch up their payments and, and make their payments over time for them. And when I presented myself like that to the seller and the bank, the bank said, oh, great. You know, we're looking for other assistance programs that can help more of our people do this. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to do this, you can just make one month's payment. We're going to put the other money on the back of the loan and you're going to be current. So literally, I, di I shouldn't have done the private money note if I mm -hmm. would have known that. But, um, but we end up just making one month's payment, mm -hmm. 690 The mortgage was current. Um, and bada boom, bada bang. Money, the money that's due on the back will either A, come from uh, private money or come from yourself, um, you know, or B, come from a tenant buyer, somebody you're willing to give a, a first chance to buy a house. 
So, you know, typically it's marketed as rent to own. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, or it, uh, it can also come through a partnership. Okay. So I own this particular house right here. I didn't bring the $40,000 outside of the loan on this property. I had somebody that says, Hey man, you know, I have a business that I run over here. You know, my taxes are high this year. You know, I want to own some property. Is there any way I can work with you? Okay. Mm-hmm. I say, Hey, uh, sure. You know, um, I'll look for the houses for us to invest in. You bring the money. I'll bring the deal. I'll do the operations. We can own it 50 yeah. 50. OK, so that's how I got this particular deal. So he brings in the 40. He bought me the forty thousand dollars to give to the seller. Mm-hmm. He also bought me the twenty thousand dollars in this house, the twenty thousand dollars to fix it up. And um, like I said, I run the operations and I run it up for us both. Mm-hmm. So um, so you there's once again, there's no lack of money. It's just the lack of knowledge. All right. Just so that I'm clear. And if you guys got any questions or comments, you guys know what to do. Put it down in the comment section below. So instead of trying to jump through all of the hoops with underwriters and banks, I could just find motivated sellers right. and negotiate creative deals with them yes. to take advantage of leveraging their mortgage. And I'm not taking their equity, right? Because I know some people think you're still in the house from them. I'm actually helping them save their credit yes. and have a time to pretty much catch their life up with whatever hardship they, they're going through so that later on they can take advantage of other opportunities, exactly. right? Now, does that mean that they got to move out of the house and go in the apartment? Hey, yes. that might just be part of life. But that person still is in a better position than if the bank takes it and then just forecloses and sells the house to a stranger for little or nothing, right? Or don't get any money at all from foreclosure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get any. So um, one one guy that I took over a mortgage on, he his house was going, his house was in the auction. Mm-hmm. In the auction. Yeah. This is another key thing about the strategy too. His house was in the auction. It was being bidded on immediately, mm-hmm. right? With subject to, you know, it's quote unquote a cash transaction. That's how the attorney's office and the state see it. Mm-hmm. So you can do it fast, okay? Yeah. The same day it was in the auction, okay, was the same day I closed on it without none of my own money and that stopped the foreclosure. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So if somebody comes to me today just like today, what happened in the parking lot? Mm-hmm. She said, hey, we need to solve this by the 23rd. Today is the 6th. That's easy. All, mm-hmm. I, all I need is 48 hours to close a subject to deal, mm-hmm. and I can stop somebody's foreclosure. Yep. That's powerful. So you really got the opportunity to help somebody make some money, you know, and really, I mean, because credit is a lot these days, yeah. you know, because, I mean, if you got bad credit, your cell phone bill is higher, your insurance is higher, you know, to get your driver's license is harder. I mean, yeah. everything is harder, you know, yeah. so that's a big deal. That's a yeah. big deal. And, it, and it's, it's really, it's really quick for them. If you're interested in learning in depth, how can you take advantage of this skill set so that you can learn how to literally take advantage of buying as many properties as you want, increase your net worth, increase your income in a real way from somebody that does it every day. I want to invite you all out to our training going down on October the 1st. Link to it is down in the description below. It is virtual, so you can take it from the comfort of your home, but seating is limited. So if you guys want to take advantage of it, Click that link down in the description below. You're going to learn from Sawan, and I challenge you all to come out and be selfish about it. Literally, Amen. come through the training, listen to everything that he has to give, and I want you to give specific questions for your situation. Literally, Sawan, my name is this. I need to do this. How in the world can I personally buy property with no money in Atlanta, in Charlotte, in wherever you are, where you're watching this video, because I want you guys to understand, don't associate the price of this training with the value of this training. Oftentimes people make that mistake and take it for granted. This is an opportunity that could change your life if you let it. Be sure to follow Swine on all his social media. And until next time, so I'm a hustler, stay hustling.